Hi everyone, my name is May. This is This Past Romance. Um, and normally, I talk to you about books and bookish-y related things. However, today is a little bit different. Today we're gonna talk about where I've been, what's been going on, and what the heck is going on with This Past Romance, especially. So, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna start with giving you all a life update and it's gonna be a little more in, in depth than I normally would do and I apologize for that uh, I will not cry it's the good news so about this time last year mid-December it's actually before this time last year but mid-December last year my grandmother got sick at Christmas um, with the family and we had to call an ambulance ambulance took her to the hospital uh, the hospital sent her home on hospice there was nothing more we could do but keep her comfortable and let her pass peacefully. She ended up passing in January. So in November of last year, I started a new job. In December at my new job, uh, everybody gets two weeks off. You're off leading into Christmas and then you're off till after New Year's. So I've rolled in, um, you know, in, in my head, I rolled into this job. I'm gonna take these two weeks, I'm gonna prep a bunch of content, I'm gonna have videos edited, I'm gonna have them scheduled, I'm gonna have them ready. And when something happens, I'll have these ready to go. But uh, my grandmother being in the hospital and me being the only other person um, that wasn't working, uh, my aunt took a lot of time off to help. But me being close enough to help and being the only other person that could help, I did. So instead of making content for you all, I helped with my grandparents. Um, because my grandfather fell while they were in the hospital and I had to go get him and take him home. It was the whole thing. He was in the ER. I got a wake up call at like 7 a.m. from my dad that was like, hey, I need you to go get your papa. He fell. He's in the emergency room. She passes in January. I'm at home. And we buried her. The week of her funeral, I took my mom's dad to get a PET scan. Uh, his cancer was back. There's nothing more they can do. He is going on hospice and he passes toward the end of March. So my original plan was, okay, Q1 is a wash. I will come into Q2. If you watch, especially that Ted Lasso video um, that I put out around that time, you can just see, because watching it back, because I've watched it back since then, you can see the sadness on my face. I I wasn't talking to anybody um, after, because I never lost a grandparent, then I lost two back to back. I shut down. I muted all my group chats. I, was, I barely responded to Izzy. Like, I didn't really talk to anybody. I went to work. I came home, I had a snack, I laid on the couch and watched Ted Lasso. And it was a repeat every day. I couldn't read, I couldn't, I couldn't listen to audiobooks, I barely listened to podcasts, I couldn't, you know, music wasn't helping me. Um, and I, it was the scariest feeling in the world to hit that point and be like, I don't know what to do. Nothing is fixing me. And it felt that as time went on, you know, a lot of people think that grief hits hardest in the beginning, but really grief hits hardest after it's been some time, I think. Because you're still, when it's all going on, when you're planning the funeral and you're burying them in those next few days after, you're still in the state of shock that they're even not here anymore. And it's not until one of the most mundane things do you realize that they're not here. Um, for example, my niece, her birthday party was, her birthday is in early February. And um, her birthday party was gonna be our first get together since my grandmother had passed. My, my, my mom never missed a birthday party. I showed up late to a party that was five minutes from my house because I couldn't see my grandfather come in without her. I didn't talk to my family. I'm so close with that little girl and her parents. And my, like, I'm, I come from a very tight, close-knit family. I could call any of them right now and they would be to me in the next 20 minutes. Like, would hop in the car, no questions asked. But I 
stood in the corner and I didn't really talk to anybody. I didn't interact with anybody. Like even, you know, a couple days later, um, I was at my cousin's and her husband was like, you were just off. And I told him, I was like, I couldn't do it. I said, I didn't have any of me. Um, you know, and this, it was hard. Nothing was giving me joy anymore. And I had to, I had to get out of that funk and I had to figure out how to get out of it. You know, I was, I wasn't doing any of the things that I enjoyed. And there was nothing I could do to fix it. I wasn't going to, to my hometown. I wasn't eating out. I wasn't hanging out with anybody. I wasn't watching fights. I was watching Ted Lasso so I wouldn't feel so alone. So that I had that noise on in the background. All that's going on. In the middle of the summer, I moved into this house. I moved out of my first apartment into this house, which I love and I'm so grateful to have the opportunity. It's a great house. It's in a great area. Um, and I love it here. You know, we're, we're getting through that. My parents move. <laughs> so we have to move my parents from my hometown into their house, but their house isn't officially ready. So we move a bunch of their stuff in, but they live with me for a couple weeks. Um, then they get moved out and they get to move into their house, which is where they live right now. And I'm back to living here. And you know, my birthday was weird and just everything through 2023 has been weird because I've experienced a lot of firsts without them. Back in early December, my aunt and I took a trip to DC and I think that it really helped with my grief process. We drove to Charlottesville, Virginia, hopped on a train, took the train to DC. One of my all time favorite actors, musicians, people on the planet is John Gallagher Jr. or Johnny Gallagher if you listen to his music. Um, and he was doing a play in DC and I've been dying to see him in something. And he's hard to catch. Um, I've wanted to go to his concerts. They're always in New York. He doesn't travel a lot, and especially not down towards where I'm at, because why would he? But I got to meet him. I got to give him a hug and I got to tell him how special I thought he was. I appreciate it. You were yeah. great. Oh, thanks. Yes. And then I got to go see all of these things that I wanted to see. I saw Cap Shield. That was pretty cool. Things have started turning around. Things have started looking up. And I'm so happy to be back and to be making content. I'm reading again. At one point in December, I had read more books than Izzy. Is that still the case? Probably not. Uh, I've been really busy. As the only daughter of an eldest daughter, I'm held to a higher standard. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm so happy to be back. And I'm so happy making content for you guys again. Um, I plan on doing a lot of bookish content for sure, but I also plan on breaking it up because it's hard to talk about books all the time sometimes, you know? Like, I don't wanna do the authors behaving badly stuff. That's Izzy's thing. And, you know, I wanna get better at vlogging, but I don't do a lot of exciting things. I also wanna talk about my, like, non-bookish favorite. Like, I wanna do cute. Q favorites, like Q1 favorites, Q2 favorites. Like I want to do these things. So I hope you guys will hang out and come along with me on this ride. I don't know what it's gonna be like and I don't know how this is gonna go, but I can only imagine it's gonna be fun. That we're gonna have fun. I hope you're doing wonderful. I hope your holiday season was great. This is going up after New Year's. Um, but I hope your holiday season has been wonderful. I hope if you're going through something, even if you feel like you can't talk about it, I hope that you're sorting it out. I'm one of those people, I can't talk about it until I get it sorted in my brain. I don't want to tell you about it until I get it figured out. And I hope that you all are happy and healthy. Um, I know that's a lot to ask. I hope you're happy and healthy. So I'll leave you with some words of wisdom from somebody who's a little bit problematic now, but I love him, uh, Theo Vaughn, who I've been a fan of since 2018. Uh, and that is be good to yourself, take care of yourself, and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye, everyone.